and for reading uh, that one scripture because something that I'm going to be talking about today, excuse me, something I'm going to be talking about today um, really is something that we really um, all deal with because we have different seasons that we all will have to experience uh, in life. And no one, uh, unfortunately, can escape them. For Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says that there is a time for everything, a season, for every activity under the heavens. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. Seasons that can be filled with joy, can be filled with pain, excitement, but then at times also disappointments. It's a gamut of emotions that at times can challenge the mental and emotional strength of even some of the strongest people that you know. And I wish that I could really uh, assure you that every day of your life is going to be sunny with no rain in sight. But the reality of things you must face, uh, they will help to build your character and your faith. John reminds us this way uh, in John 16, when he said, do not worry for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, and we believers are not immune to trouble. We just have the faith to believe that the promises of God are still yea and amen. And even though there are moments we will have questions for God, the confidence we have to have in his divine will shall sustain us through everything. Uh, I preached um, a, a word before uh, last year. Uh, it was the word why. And we talked about how faith was the substance of things that we hope for. And it's the evidence of the things that we don't see. And we talked about the substance word, meaning hypostasis, which means that you're standing under something when you don't understand. Amen. That's true faith. But today, I want to talk about the word wait. Somebody say wait. And the word wait is both a noun and it's also a verb. The word wait comes from an old German word called Hwaten, which means to keep watch. Now, as a child in school, I'm sure you were taught as well as I was taught that a verb is an action word. So how could a posture of waiting be considered a, a verb because there appears to be no movement in the word wait? Well, I learned that while I'm waiting, I'm believing which is a verb. Amen. While I'm waiting, I'm expecting. That's a verb. Amen. While I'm waiting for God to supply, supply is a verb. All of my needs according to his riches and glory. My waiting doesn't mean I'm not doing anything, but my waiting then, write this down, becomes the launching place of my expectancy. <laughs> Let me say that again. My wait then becomes the launching place of my expectancy and waiting is not always the best feeling but it's necessary for your next place that God wants to take you to on this past Thursday I took my mom to her dental appointment and, and right next door to the dental appointment was a nail salon place and so when she went to the dentist I walked in and asked if they could give me a pedicure and she said she could probably take me in about 15 minutes so I went and got me a vitamin water and came back Sure enough, they had the spa being set up for me. I sat down and put my feet in the water, and I sat there preparing for someone to come and give my feet some joy. Amen? And as I was sitting there, I, I noticed after five minutes, no one said anything to me. Ten minutes, and I'm still sitting there. I'm watching people go back and forth. Fifteen minutes has come, and now I'm looking like, wait a minute, now maybe I need to leave because I could take my money anywhere. I almost want to have an attitude. I've been sitting for 15 minutes. But then, then I remembered, I said, no, uh, when I sat down, my feet Feet look like I walked from Ebenezer AME Church barefooted to Waldorf up Indian Head Highway. I said, no, stay seated right here. And so I waited 15 more minutes, a total of 30 minutes before someone touched my feet. But let me tell you something. My socks told me thank you, amen, when I put my shoes back on. Because everybody's feet shouldn't be exposed. Mine is certainly one of them. Because the lady, when she looked at my feet, she said, N -n 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 -n. she was talking to somebody. And then I said, are you talking about me? And she said, no, I'm just, your feet is going to be extra. Your feet is going to be extra. I told her, I know I've got some bad feet, but you know, 
But I just thank God that I waited. Amen. I waited. And ladies, some of you, you know what I'm talking about. When you go to your stylist, your appointment is 11 and they take you at 11.05 and you're happy until after they take you out of the ball from washing your hair and getting everything together because the stylist still can't see you for 45 more minutes. But guess what? You're not going to leave that place because you know when you leave, you're going to have the hair that you want to have. Amen. And I don't know about you all. I like to eat, so I don't mind waiting on a good restaurant. There's a place I I love uh, uh, down at the harbor, the Gaylord, a steakhouse that is amazing. I'll wait there. I'll, I'll go to Bethesda and wait for Del Frisco for some good food. I'll wait on some good food. Amen. And, and some of you know I am a huge amusement park buff. I love amusement rides. Give me Kings Dominion, Callaway Gardens, Hershey Park, Six Flags. Uh, uh, but just a couple of months ago, I took vacation in California. I went over to Universal Studios, California. And I tell you, when I got there, I was so so excited until I saw the long line. I said, wait a minute, this is Wednesday. Why are they here on Wednesday? Then I remembered it was the beginning of summer vacation. So all of the kids and the children and their family, they were all out. So I walked up and it said that the average wait time for the ride would be 60 to 90 minutes. It was already 11 o'clock and I'm not going to pay $175 for an admission to only get on two rides. So I had to spend extra money on something called a fast track pass. And what this did, this allowed me to pay an extra $100, but I got to go to another line and to the front of the line. So I got on every ride I wanted to get on, and I was only there for about two hours uh, because I just could not wait uh, that long. But perhaps even you, some of the most challenging times of our waiting, I don't know if you, I can't take it sometimes, that I-95, you don't know what you're going to get coming in and out of Virginia. And then you have crazy drivers that I don't understand of why you drive so fast when it's so crowded. And and why you were swerve in and out of lanes and, and you get so far, you tailgate me so close, only to stop just 10 feet late and you can't go anywhere. Uh, but because we just, as creatures of habit, we just don't want to wait. Sister, you can remember the joy of your first child that you had. And you were all excited and your family is excited. Oh, yes, it's the first baby. We're going to have a baby. And all the excitement and the joy, you go out, you, get, you, you begin to buy baby clothes and, and you get a crib and, and you say, we're going to to paint the room pink, yellow, or light blue. What are we going to do? And just excite me. But then all of a sudden, something happens to you women called a, 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 a morning sickness. And things begin to happen in your body. Your nose gets a little bit wider. Your ankles get swollen. And things stretch out and your moods change. Amen? But you've got to wait through that period until that child comes to understand why you had to wait. Now, I personally uh, get really agitated um, at the cat and mouse game that uh, we have to play with the airlines industry. Two Sundays ago, after ministering here, um, I left a little bit early so I can catch my flight to Columbus, Ohio, because I had to go there and I had to minister at a men's worship service, and um, I was excited. I got to the airport two hours ahead of time, and when I got there, uh, they told me that my flight had been canceled. I said, well, what? why did you cancel it? So they said, well, it's been canceled um, because there's weather. I said, weather where? Because the weather here is clear. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's 85 degrees. It's perfect conditions. They said, well, I can't explain everything but they said this is weather related and I said no this happens I wish the airlines I told them y'all would stop selling tickets until you get enough pilots and flight attendants to man these flights because you cancel things and then it makes it inconvenient for us and I had to wait thank the Lord uh, to go to their closing service that they had which was an outside 5k run so I was still able to go but I had to wait but the pandemic probably uh, just like you is one of the hardest things it like to drove me crazy because the two year period that we were separated, you know, I became so bored that I just started walking. I, I took up a, a new form of exercise where I, I started with a half a mile, then I went to one mile, then two miles. And before I knew it, two years later, I'm walking every day, four or five miles a day. And it, it was something that I had to understand in a time of waiting. We've got to understand that God is still going to be in the midst of what we're going, what we're going through. And so as I begin to, to get the habit now of not just exercising, but also dieting and changing my meal plan, 
plans. And instead of going to Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, twice a week, I just went once a month. Because how many of you all know, I'm not going to stop eating fried chicken. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you judge me. Say what you want to say. I like baked chicken. Amen. I know it's healthier for us. Uh, Dr. Ross, thank you so much. But I understand uh, that I'm not going to, especially around the holiday season, because I am an adamant shrimp and a lobster mac and cheese. I am a connoisseur. Those who watch me do it on my Instagram, let me tell you, I can do it. Here I get my carnation pet milk. I get all my eggs. I get my butter. I'm not talking about Velveeta. I get my butter, get everything together. I get all five type of cheeses. Then I go to the seafood store and I get my lobster tails fresh and I get all of my shrimp fresh. I devein them. I saute them. I prepare them first. And then I put all the ingredients together and it looks so good. It looks so delicious but I can't eat it in that form because the oven has to be on 350 and it has to go through the fire process for an hour in order for it to be ready amen and so I, I understand that a lot of times we don't want to have to wait on things but how many of you all know that waiting is something good because waiting teaches you uh, the strength that you even have the faith that you even have uh, in yourself but perhaps one of the hardest things, the most exhausting things that I think we are all tired of uh, is waiting to bring this orange moon calf scatterbrain for causing one of the darkest moments in the history of our country through the insurrection. We've watched this committee for almost two years present evidence after evidence, countless testimonies of wrongdoing, and yet this fascist nemesis continues to deceive and lie, which activates his blind base to believe what is really the big lie, him. He was somebody who was not qualified to run this country because of lack of integrity. Even today, uh, as the Mar-a-Lago unfolds in the media, based on who you listen to, CNN or Fox, is how you'll form your opinion. Uh -huh. And the criminal way by which documents were destroyed in the White House and other classified documents removed and taken to his private residence only for the FBI to have to intervene shows the threat to our national security of this country and how deceitful this person really is. And, and, and when you read the book of uh, Amos, I almost um, feel like uh, what we're viewing today because there's such an unlevel uh, playing field uh, in this country. And it seems like the rich just keep getting rich and, and, and those who are struggling, we ask keep on working and keep on working and keep on working. And the book of Amos holds God's people accountable for their ill treatment of others. It repeatedly points out the failure of the people to fully embrace God's idea of justice. And here Amos is being used by God to cry out against those wealthy and corrupt individuals who didn't handle God's people correctly. And God's word through Amos was directed against the privileged people of Israel who had no love for their neighbors, who took advantage of others and only looked out for their own concerns. They were selling off needy people for goods and taking advantage of the helpless, oppressing the poor. Amos said that they were drunk on their own economic success. And sometimes, y'all, I just want to slap this smirky grin off of these people's face when they keep hearing wrong things said and they keep coming to the rescue of lies, coming to the rescue of wrong. I just want to slap the taste out of their mouth because we live in a time where we have already been oppressed as a people. When you all brought us here from Africa, we didn't ask to come here. You brought us, oppressed us, and then you kept us down for so long. And now that we want to get up, now you're looking at us and, and wish that we could go back to the slave every time because I believe that's what they would love to start a civil war they would love to see us all kill each other and 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 and, and the people who are the privileged would still be behind the gates of strength the gates of safety but the devil is a lie I ain't going back to slavery I don't have that mentality I'm not going back to to what y'all think I should you will not oppress me and Amos rebuked them because he saw in that lifestyle that Israel forgot about God 
Uh, therefore, Amos would be the messenger from God for nine chapters to cry out against the wickedness of Jeroboam the king, who the Bible says was a great warrior and he brought in a lot of money. But in the eyes of the prophet, he was one of the worst kings ever. He would allow idol worship from Canaan, which led to the injustice and neglect for the poor. So there in chapters 1 and 2 of Amos are a series of messages to the nation and Israel. In chapters 3 through 6 are a collection of poems that expresses Amos' message to the people of Israel and its leaders. Chapters 7 through 9 contains a series of visions that Amos experienced that depict God's coming judgment on Israel. For be not deceived, God is not mine. Whatever a man soweth, the Bible says, that shall he also what? he's going to reap. So here we are in chapters 9. We find God's judgment and his punishment for those who practice hatred and lawlessness. And then in the final verses of chapter 9, after all of the punishments and the curses, we see a shift. God makes a decree, hallelujah, to the faithful, to the ones who had been waiting for righteousness and justice. The Bible says the wait is now over because God makes a decree in verse 13 through verse 15. Now, Reverend Milligan, I ask you to re just read the one part because I asked them downstairs to put this on the screen. I found this paraphrasing of, of chapter 9 verses of 13, 14, and 15, and I pray that it blesses you. This is what it's, it said. It won't be long from now. Listen, Ebenezer, in this next season, for those who've been faithful, things are going to happen so fast, your head will spin. <laughs> One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening all at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off of the mountains and off of the hills. I will make right again, he says, for my people Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. God, your God, says so. I'm going to say it again. Uh-huh. He said it won't be long from now. For things are going to happen so fast, your head will spin. One thing fast on the hills of the other you won't be able to keep up everything will be happening all at once and everywhere you look blessings 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 like wine pouring off the mountains and the hills for i will make right again for my people israel they'll rebuild their ruined cities they'll plant vineyards and drink good wine they'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables god your god said so he said it won't be long from now Ebenezer, I decree it won't be long from now. I decree that things are going to happen so fast, your head will spin. If you believe that, give God some praise. Right, I believe your head is going to spin in this next season. One thing, fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening all at once. Look at somebody say, everything will start happening all at once. It's what happened for Minister Ricky Dillard in this season. He came out with a new record and the Lord blessed him and he got number one songs and then he won four stellar awards and then he got the James Cleveland Award and now he's going to be announcing about a movie that he's getting ready to do. And things, it's just getting ready to happen. I want to know, is there anybody in here that believes because of your faithfulness, your head is getting ready to spin. Things are going to start happening. It's going to happen all at once. The Bible said bless Blessings upon blessings. Every place that you look, blessing. I dare you to look around. Point to heaven and say, I'm getting a blessing this way. There is a blessing that way. God has something that is in store. It's going to happen so fast. It's going to make your head spin. You're going to have so much. You're going to be able to help somebody else. You're going to need to give some away because God is a God who is getting ready to get in the pouring position. And he said he's going to open the windows of heaven 
and shower you down a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive can somebody give God praise because you won't have room enough to receive in this season come on because you've been faithful God is getting ready to restore some things because you waited and didn't take things into your own hands God is going to bring you into a time of abundance so wait on the Lord <laughs> be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart wait I say on the Lord for the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but to the one that will endure until the end because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not pray tell somebody it won't be long from now therefore my saints be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain tell somebody your labor is not in vain your fasting is not in vain your praying is not in vain and because you've sown in tears you get ready to reap in joy I feel a shout in here right now because it's getting ready to happen it's getting ready to happen what you need is getting ready to happen what you believe in God for is getting ready to happen come on tell somebody it's getting ready to happen it's getting ready to happen the storm is passing over come on the storm you're dealing with is passing over and God is getting ready to bless you and take you into another season come on somebody praise God right here come on come on give God praise right here because it's getting ready to happen come on God's getting ready to do the work. He's getting ready to open the doors. You just got to wait on it. You just got to believe it. You just have to trust him in everything. I wonder, is there a praise in this room? Because it won't be long from now. It won't be long from now. Come on, it won't be long from now. Praise him because it won't be long from now. Praise him because you got through it. Praise him because God brought you through it. Give him praise because God did the work for you. Hallelujah, Jesus, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, somebody, and give God some praise because it's getting ready to happen. God is doing it. Come on, God is doing the work. Praise him while he's doing the work. Give him the thanks while he's doing the work. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to do the work. You know the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Say this. It won't be long from now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not going to be long. I know it seemed like it's lasted forever. And there's one thing that happened that I asked God in the art of learning how to wait, Ebenezer. And he took me to the book where Noah was instructed to build an ark. And it took him all of the years to build the ark. And then he received instructions on who to put on the ark. And the Bible says Noah, his family, and all of these animals were on the vessel that Noah built based on what God commanded him to do. And when I tell you, I didn't understand because the Bible says they were on the ark and it rained 40 days and 40 nights. This is for somebody that has been really waiting and you've been waiting and you've been waiting and it seems like things aren't coming to pass. It seems like things are stalled on your behalf. I said, God, if they were on there for 40 days and for 40 nights, why couldn't they just go ahead and get off? And he said, Byron, keep reading. The Bible says they stayed on the ark for 364 days. That's way past the storm had been over. But God said, but guess what? The conditions are still to the point that the waters haven't receded. And for somebody in here, you need to know the waters haven't receded in your life. That's why you can't get out just now. Hold on and wait. Yes, the storm is over. But if you get off the boat now, you might die. If you get off the boat right now, you might do something that you don't need to do. Tell somebody that's why you need to wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. He will give you everything that you need.